Hi everybody, I'm Michael Ralph, and today we're going to be making a field biomass model. Uh, you can see I've already set up a skeleton here with all these headings. You'll need the measurement, the organism for name and count, mass, this is the mass per, so mass for just one of that organism, and then the total mass, scale, energy level, and then the final biomass contribution, which will all come together in energy pyramid, which we will then graph. The first thing we're going to need to do is put in some known information. The first thing is the field size. How big is the entire field that we're going to sample? So for our purposes, let's just say it's 1,350 meters squared. We'll need to define the size of sample that we took for the producer, and this is also in meters squared. So let's say that we're going to take a quarter meter squared. So we div divided it into quadrants and then took one of those quadrants. And then there's some vocabulary over here that we're going to use, and we'll come to that now. The first entry we need is the measurement, so this is which measurement did this line of data come from. And so for sake of argument, let's say that it came from the single meter squared, so when we searched one meter squared for consumers. So that vocabulary we need to put in small. And then the name of the organism, let's just call it, I don't know, pill bugs. And how many pill bugs did we end up seeing? Let's say four. Next up, let's go ahead and put in a formula for the total mass, which we'll come to, and that's going to be the count, how many we saw, times whatever we decide to say the mass of one individual is. And we'll go ahead and fill that entire column. will be a formulaic column. Next up will be the scale. This is how to bring our sample up to being a full field measurement. And this is going to be a conditional formula. So this, if the measurement size was large, let's start with large being the full field, then the scale size would be 1 because we've already sampled the entire field versus if it is not large, then it may be another if. If this says small, which it does, then a small sample size is one meter squared, so we will need to scale it up to being the entire size of the field, and we'll have to lock that one up. Otherwise, the only other possible possibility is harvest, but we don't need to define that because it's the last possibility, and if that's the case, then it will need to be the size of the field locked times the inverse of the sample size. So that'll say one quarter, which means we need to take it times four, and then times the total field size to get it scaled all the way up. Close all of our parentheses, and that's another formulaic. So you can see here it says small, and so the scale size we need to take whatever sample we saw times the scale number, which is just the number of meters squared in the field, versus down here it says something other than large or small, so it is assuming that it says harvest, which means we need to take it times the total field size times the inverse of the sample. So that's working the way it should. Next up is we need to find the energy level that the organism lives at. So pill bugs are primary consumers, so we'll label it. And then the biomass contribution, this is another formulaic. This is the total mass in the field times the scale to get us up to, and of course, zero because it still says zero. So now when we put in a mass, let's say that each pill bug is going to be 0.5 grams. So total mass in our sample was 2, so 4 times 1 half is 2, and then 2 scaled up to be the number of pill bugs, so the mass of the pill bugs in the entire field, and there it is. Okay, from here, let's go ahead and say that we're going to do that for all of our data, and here's an example data set. You can see that we've got the entire field sample dragonflies. We've got our producer, which is scaled all the way up. So everything's looking good here. Next up is we need to set up our energy pyramid graph. And here we're going to do another formula, and this is going to be a sum if. So we want to total up 
if this column says, so if that column says producer, because this is the producer box, then we want it to sum this column. And you can see that the only box that is next to producer is this one, and so the sum of that box is just that box again. And we're going to do the same thing for each one of these, except for in these we'll say the different labels. So we get sums just depending on label. The next step will be to insert our graph. The graph that we're looking for is under column, and we want the three-dimensional stacked pyramid. This is an unusual case, but they don't have a 2D option, so we'll just use the three-dimensional pyramid, and that's of course not right, so we're going to need to change our data sets considerably. The series name, the first series needs to be producer, and we'll delete all of this junk. and that's all there is to it. And then we're going to add a couple more. We're going to add our primary consumers and of course our secondary consumers. And then let's add our label here. So far, so good. But the last step here, as you can see, this access is not properly formatted. So we need to set the maximum as 1, but the minimum needs to stay 0. Okay, the last thing, and it might help do this before we do that, will be let's go ahead and fix our colors. So that's going to be the producer, so let's change that to be the same color as we set the label up here. Let's do the same thing for each of those. We use a light blue there. And then let's go ahead and format our axis one more time. And now you can see we've got almost all producer with a little bit of consumer and then an even smaller amount of secondary consumer which is what we're hoping to see so here we've got some nice cleaner labels some data labels and of course as you expand your data set you will most likely get larger and larger sections of primary and secondary consumer but this still drives home the core point which is that we have almost all producer down here and the 10% rule is really more of a guideline it's not a hard and fast rule from here you can let the students continue to play with it they can put in hypothetical new data sets so if we saw in the large we saw a deer we saw two deer and they are 90,000 grams per and we saw two of them Oops. all the rest of it is going to work out. The only thing we need is those are primary consumers. And now you can see that the graph adjusts itself appropriately. So students can manipulate their graph and see how the addition or subtraction of different organisms will impact their energy flow. Good luck.